Hello, this is Casper, and welcome to another video of Mbraco Tutorials. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the of, of, of a couple of configuration files in Umbraco. Just to quickly give you an idea of what can be changed and how things look, basically. For example, here in Visual Studio, I'm just close it up a minute. Uh, in our test application, we created in video one. It's just a, a basic application; no content has been added, apart from Umbraco, of course. From here, we, as we can see, we have uh, let's yeah, let's uh, take a quick uh, review here. We have the app browsers folder. To be honest, don't know what this is for. It's just there. We have the app code. There's nothing in there, but here you could put uh, class files. Uh, you know, if you have any class files from any web forms or MVC projects you've created in the past that do different things you can just put them in there and yeah just uh, reference them you know maybe it has a, a text truncate class that truncates uh, when you reach at 250 characters and does something special in an input box I don't know anything but this is definitely. But this is where you put them. The the app data. And here there's uh, some logs, uh, some nugget, uh, nougat backup, uh, stuff like that. We don't really want to be touching uh, any of this. And the app plugins here. You would be putting your own plugins if you create any from Braco. But we'll be covering that in a way later tutorial. We have the bin folder uh, or binary folder. This is where Umbraco uh, compiles everything when we build the project by pressing F6 or Control Shift B on the keyboard. Uh, this we do not need to be touching at all. This is the config directory or configuration, but we'll be looking at that in a second. Here's the CSS folder. Here you'll just put all your CSS files, you know, bootstrap.css, whatever you want to use. Here's the master pages, uh, but we won't be using master pages since we'll be running MVC. Here the, here's the media, here are all media files, like videos, photos, stuff like that, they'll all be added here. Uh, and we'll also cover that in a later uh, session, the OBJ, or object, folder, I have no idea what it's for. We have the scripts folder, which is for like JavaScript, you know, yeah, JavaScript, jQuery, Knockout, AngularJS, whatever you want to use. And then we have the Umbraco folder, this is the uh, back office, whenever we write so you know our our website slash umbraco then it takes us to the back end and yeah this we won't really be touching either we have the umbraco client don't know what this actually consists of I think it's a lot of the uh, different data types stuff like that won't be touching that either really we have the user controls we won't be touching those either we have the views we'll be uh, yeah talking about views in a later session but just so you know this is the, these are the macro partials the partial views and then we'll put all our views and master templates in here and then we have the XSLT we won't be talking about that in, uh, for the moment anyway and then of course we have the default.aspx we have the global.asax files we pro we'll probably be talking about those in a later session but let's just skip them for now we have the packages.configuration uh, this just lists all the packages that this solution has this project, you know, ASP.Eraser, ASP.NBC, fixed display nodes, stuff like that. And then we have the web.config file. This we'll be uh, talking about extensively later on, but for now, you know, this is just as it is. One thing, though, that is very nice to have a look at is the. Uh, let me see if I can find it here. Um, Okay, maybe I can't find it, but there is a way. There is a yeah. Here it is. This is what Umbraco uses to tell itself where is the backend. So a, a lot of people and I um, myself usually don't change this. So if you go to any site that's made in Umbraco and write forward slash Umbraco, then it will take you to the backend login, and of course that's not very safe. So if you need to change that someday, of course you change the folder name we also change the value in here to kind of tell it okay look for it in this directory far far away and uh, yeah and then of course if you here it just says you know add name braco dbsn and then the connection string to the database but if you actually have a database somewhere then of course that was where you would put in the data but if you install it as I did in episode 1 and just put in your connection string details or just the whole connection string 
then this is not anything we need to worry about. Yeah, and then uh, SMTP, network host, 127, no, this isn't anything we need to touch at all. Custom errors, right now the mode is equal to remote only, but we want to write off, actually, so that we can see errors when they pop up. And yeah, that I think that's it for now. There's a whole load of stuff in here that I don't know half of. Uh, I'm pretty sure, but that is yeah, doesn't really matter. Uh, yeah, and then a whole load of assemblies. But we'll probably we'll ha we have to look in this file uh, quite often actually when adding new things or something goes wrong. But we'll talk about that later. Let's just close these files for now, and then talk about the one I wanted to talk about, which was the Umbraco configuration directory. Here, there's a whole load of configuration that you need that you might want to change. 404 handlers, for example. There's some. Uh, there's the tiny MCE editor, and then there's the two main important ones: uh, the URL rewriting. Uh, this is very useful if you have some uh, SEO, you know, search engine optimization going on on the site. Then, okay, I can't show you the code right now, but I'll show you that in a later video where we can go in here. And then we can um, tell it to add a new uh, new rewrite, and say, okay, if you go to, you know, th for example, what it basically is is if you go to a page, let's just say Facebook. And let's say Facebook once had a page called About, and then Google found that page and registered it, and then suddenly, if you wrote about Facebook, of course, that page will probably be the first thing you encounter. And then suddenly Facebook, for some weird reason, thinks, okay, you know what, we'll change that page name, and instead of calling it about, we'll call it, uh, inf you know, information. Don't know why you do that, but just an example. Then as soon as they change that, then maybe it takes Google, a l it, it, doesn't, it doesn't take Google a long time, but it still takes Google a s uh, enough time to find the page. When it finally finds it, of course, it has to index it. And by the time it's indexed it and all that, then suddenly, you know, by, by then in the other page, the about page, has been completely destroyed and, ca and cannot be used. But, uh, especially because it's Facebook and a very big site, many, many people have probably linked to it in, in you know, comments, you know, so, you know, when was Facebook developed and some, you know, someone asks this question and someone answers it, you know, here's the about Facebook page and then suddenly it's linked. The more links, or it's very, it's very good for search engine optimization with Google, if there are links to your page and perhaps some links from your page to other pages. But if there are dead links that go from uh, from other others page to your page, but it, it returns a 404, you know, content does not exist, then you will be ranked down on Google, and then it won't like you very much. And that is. There's a lot of hype about about the, that these days, so you want to make sure always to stay at the top of your game when working with search engines, especially with Google, of course, since it's well the biggest. So what you'd do here is you'd say, okay, if you visit the about page, then redirect me to the new page which is called information. That way, you won't lose any search engine optimization, you won't lose any places, and you won't uh, have unhappy people or customers. Uh, but the main reason why we're here is to talk the, about the Umbraco settings.config. Okay, the first thing, uh, you have notifications, for example. Uh, the email should be used uh, as from email when Umbraco sends a notification. You can put that in here, for example. Uh, a preview badge, don't know exactly what that is all about, but uh, yeah, we'll leave that for now. That's probably something nice to change. Uh, library cache duration, how long it should cache. Uh, yeah, in zero seconds, we'll disable the caching. Caching is just a, a, a way of the the web application to store s uh, content on your computer and also on the server to render content faster. So it doesn't have to fetch everything, but only if something changes. So it doesn't have to lo load everything all the time, but it just can store it and then just throw it up like you know CSS files, JavaScript files, like jQuery, something like that. Um, yeah, let's see, D disable, disallowed upload files, uh, yeah, ASPX files, CSH, CSHTML config files, 
HTML files, XML files, SVG, PHP, HC access files are not allowed. It was, uh, these files will not be allowed to be uploaded via the upload control for media and content. So you could put .mp4 files, stuff like that, all that can be uploaded, but not these files here. And of course you can remove or put in more files. Um, yeah, let's see. Yeah, okay, yeah, well, this is also good. Defines the default document type property used when adding properties in the back office. Right now it's set to text string, so when you add a new document type, and we'll get in in the next one or two videos about what document types are and how they should be used. But this basically says, when I create a new one, show me the text string type as the first one. This next one is another good one. Set to true to, which is the, yeah, the uh, keep user logged in. Set to true to auto update login interval and thereby disabling the lock screen. What this basically means is when you log in, keep the uh, keep the user log in. Because right now, if I open up my um, bracket here, yeah, I'm in uploading the first video uh, here. Now you can see now it's logged me out since I started the first video. If I log in, of course, I'll still go to the recycle bin. But it's logged me out because oh, I think it's been around like an hour or something like that since I was logged in, and then it times out and logs me out. Otherwise, you know, a lot of web web applications do that. Otherwise, you could just stay in all the time. And if someone got hold of your computer, they'd just be able to stay in there forever. Right. Yep, hide disabled users in the back office, set to false. Yeah, uh, as it says in 4.8, and I knew that, disabled users are now showed uh, dim in, uh, and last in the tree. So if you do disable uh, any users or members, then they will still be shown, but they were... Yeah. You know, they'll be they'll have like a shaded or as it says dimmed text, but you just set this to true, and then of course they w you wouldn't be able to see them. But and that's also a smart thing in in a way if you don't want to uh, other content developer uh, you know editors to see what you what what's been hidden or who are not there anymore. Right, the next thing is the, the this is the important one the one the default rendering engine. As you can see here, actually by the text, to switch the default rendering engine to MVC, change this value from Webforms to MVC. But it already says MVC, that's because they have not been in to change this since probably Umbraco version 4 or 6 or whenever they switched properly to Webform, to, uh, sorry, MVC. Uh, but yeah, if you do decide to use Umbraco with Webforms, then firstly I would definitely uh, advise you to find another tutorial, because this will be about MVC. But then this is where you would change from versus MVC to web forms. But as far as I know, you can actually do like a hybrid. You can still write web forms on MVC and vice versa. It will still compile and work. But I would not do it. I'd just run with MVC. Um, yeah, and that's basically it. There's a, probably a lot more down here. But uh, that's just the most important stuff for now. So, yeah. Just close it. Yep. Okay guys, thanks for watching, please like and subscribe if you could use this information for anything.